photographs that they took. And this was Richmond uh, in the early 60s, uh, when right at the time I was going to university, this is southwest Richmond, Steveston was a little corner, there are farmers in there somewhere. It was all farmland. And from 1969 until today, about 40 years later, or I'd like to have a lot faster than that, it ended up looking like this. Now that's what we're headed for in Delta. You saw the earlier maps of the South Fraser Perimeter Road and the harbor expansion. When all those areas are filled in that are already improved, then they'll start coming and saying, well, we've got to make this economical, we've got to square it off here, square it off there, and eventually they fill everything in until all you have is a mass of development. Our farm is still there. That's us. <laughs> What happens then, and this is where Halliday and Harris were absolutely correct in their uh, analysis. They were concerned, I was working on farmland issues, but when they wrote the report, I quit for the future, they took me out for walks in Sturgeon Banks to see what was happening. And they said already, well, way back in 1972, the habitat was being destroyed by the waterfall because the waterfall normally fed in the farm fields, and we had taken away vast acreages of farmland, and in Richmond's case, it ended up being around 14,000 acres lost, then the waterfall will feed on their natural habitat until it's all gone. And today, the natural habitat of Sturgeon Banks is all gone. The natural habitat, believe it or not, on Roberts Banks is all gone. If you go out along Roberts Banks, you'll find that most of the grasses there are what I've, what I've nicknamed salt grass, as distichless spicata, it's a type of creeping rooted grass that grows low like cooch grass that grows on, on shore. And the birds can't eat it. The snow geese and the ducks eat the roots and you can't pull the roots up. So this, the, the foreshore marshes of Sturgeon Banks and Roberts Banks have overgrazed, totally destroyed, and the birds are coming inland. That is the playground at Steveson High School uh, in 2007. There was, uh, during the course of a, of, a, of a few weeks, there were 6,000 snow geese on that playing field. In the front, the geese ripped the grass out, left this kind of mess, and then they moved over where there's still some grass. These are seagulls. The seagulls follow after the geese and find out whatever worms and stuff's left behind. But the snow geese did the damage. When Halliday and Harris wrote the report in 1972, they warned that this is what's going to happen. At that time, there were only 20,000 snow geese in the Roberts Banks, Sturgeon Banks area in the wintertime because most of the geese went to California. Well, one of the effects of global warming and climate change is that we are now California. And the birds don't even have the collective memory of going any further south. And so we now have a resident population of about 20,000 snow geese. In 2007, we had 90,000 snow geese stayed, stayed for the winter. Last year, because of the big snowstorm, about 60 or 70,000 of them went further south. But we've got a resident population now of snow geese that have never been further south. So this is the problem that faces us today. We're losing our farmland, we're losing our habitat, and it is at a, at a cost of billions of dollars in terms of replacement value. I want to go back to an earlier slide, and this works. What I'm suggesting that all the damage is done. Don't develop the Spedamore farm. You develop that, you're adding to it. Don't develop the farmlands along the South Fraser Perimeter Road that are being brought up today. Instead, the government and Delta Council can have something to do with this, can insist that the province buy up industrially zoned lands, buy up agriculturally zoned lands that aren't in the ALR, and replace the lands that are lost. When governments have to do that, maybe they will think twice about taking land out of the LR for harbor expansion and highways in the first place. The other thing I think we need to think about, and I, I just want to go back to the speaker that preceded me, I'm hoping that the young people here today in this province will have the same kind of foresight that some of the young people had when we stopped the expansion of the Lionsgate Bridge way back in the 60s. Uh, people camped out along uh, Georgia Street and around Stanley Park in protest of putting a highway, another highway through the park. 
It's that kind of dedication to civil disobedience that we need today if we're going to bring this government and this province to its senses. Thank you very much.